Let's talk about our Florida Gators quarterback situation that we got going on. We'll talk about two more potential men's basketball coaches, one of which has Florida ties. And I'll be joined by Florida Gators linebacker David Reese to wrap up today's show only here on Locked On Gators. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown Gators, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. Happy Thursday. I'm Brandon Olson. You can find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with whole nine sports don't forget to like subscribe leave a comment leave a review let me know what you think of the show getting right into today's content though we're talking about the florida gators quarterbacks and this is a um a, a highly talked about topic for us florida gators fans uh, anthony richardson of course was injured got injured in high school re-injured it now and and he's been dealing with injuries pretty much this entire past year uh, it's been a little rough for him he did get the all clear on monday so he will be a full go for the florida gators he was full go on practice on tuesday which again the next practice is today spring game april 16th and with anthony richardson being healthy and getting the all clear that is very important because we look at this quarterback battle and throughout the entire offseason the discussion was with and with Anthony Richardson gone or expected to not be able to play, uh, it, it could really open the door for Emory Jones to take control of that starting job again, which we know Emory Jones was the starter for the huge majority of last season. Anthony Richardson kind of got thrown to the wolves for a little bit. Emory Jones came in for the bowl game. And before the bowl game, Emory Jones announced that he would enter the transfer portal following the bowl game against UCF and it was kind of just forgot about <laughs> after that. Uh, Emory Jones did not enter the transfer portal. We didn't hear anything about why he chose to not enter the transfer portal. We didn't hear if he would still. I know that I've heard rumors and I've relayed those rumors that Emory Jones will be getting his degree from the University of Florida and then he will hit the transfer portal and leave and look for a starting job if he does not win the starting job in spring ball. I don't know if that's true anymore, but what I do know now, which we learned after the first day of spring ball, was that Emory Jones chose to stay in Gainesville because Billy Napier spoke to him and kind of got him to stay and said, hey, basically it's an open competition still. Like You should come back and figure this thing out and we'll see what we can do. And that's positive for me because... I know that so many people, when I've spoke about the quarterback competition, go, oh, it's Anthony Richardson's job. It's Anthony Richardson's job. Obviously, Billy Napier saw some things in Emory Jones to say, I want to keep you around. And I think that's important because I've been saying this whole time. This is an open quarterback competition. It could be anybody's job. But no, it's just been, this is Anthony Richardson, this is Anthony Richardson. But that is not the case, clearly, as Billy Napier does see at least something in Emory Jones where he felt it was valuable to keep him around. And the final quarterback that we really talk about when we're talking about this quarterback battle, Jack Miller the third, the transfer from Ohio State, that he's he's kind of the guy that gets thought of as not elite at anything, but he's got an accurate arm. He's got average mobility. Um, and I said it yesterday, and I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. I'll continue to say it. He kind of reminds me of like an Alex Smith type. Obviously, Alex Smith had a long career in the NFL, but he kind of reminds me of that guy where he's got an accurate arm. He, he can make those short passes. He can handle the checkdowns, the screens, RPOs. He could do all that stuff. He's not going to lead the team in rushing like Emory Jones did this past season. No, that's not going to be him. He's not going to throw 70-yard bombs in the air. He might get 70-yard passes after the run after the catch, but he's not going to get 70-yard passes in the air like Anthony Richardson would. No, but Billy Napier, we saw him do this with Levi last year, Levi Lewis last year at the quarterback for Louisiana, where, yeah, he, he's not going to ask you to do things that you can't do. So Billy Napier is a good enough coach where 
let's say Jack Miller the third wins the starting quarterback job, then this offense will go a lot more RPO heavy. It'll go a lot more screen heavy and slants and just quick passes because that would be playing to the strength of his quarterback. Again, I, I don't think it'll be Jack Miller the third. I've said this stance for a while and I will continue to do so. I want it to be Anthony Richardson. I think it will be Anthony Richardson that will be the starting quarterback of the Florida Gators in 2022. But something I've also said that a lot of you guys don't like, um, if Billy Napier ultimately decides that it should be somebody else as starting quarterback, whether it's Emory Jones or Jack Miller the third, then so be it. It's as simple as that for me because I'm viewing this as an open quarterback competition. Last season was not an open. It was an open quarterback competition. Last season was not an actual open co- quarterback competition like this one is. So regardless of who I think it should be, regardless of who we think it should be, we don't see everything. There's limited media availability for all of these practices, so we don't see everything. But I do trust Billy Napier enough. I think he's a good enough coach where if he says QB1 should be this guy, then I'm down for it. I won't, I won't question that at all. And if it's not Anthony Richardson, I will fully expect to see Anthony Richardson rotating in similar to what he did last year. Uh, I, I think Billy Napier is smart enough now. you got to get your playmakers on the field. And we're going to talk about some Florida Gators college basketball coach candidates. But first, I'm going to talk to you guys about Stat Hero because March Madness starts today. And I'm, I'm sure my bracket's going to be busted by the time you guys even listen to this. I used to crush them. And then I learned about basketball, and now I suck at them. So that's really fun. I try to big brain everything. Stat Heroes NCAA single game pickems, though, they pit star players against each other in a hybrid of fantasy and sports gambling. Stat Hero gives you the advantage, resulting in their gamers winning four times more often. Why is that? Because Stat Hero eliminates the mystery of who or what you're going against. Sign up for free right now at stathero.com slash locked on and use promo code locked on for a 100% deposit match. That's stathero.com slash locked on. Use promo code locked on, L O C K E D, no space O N, for a 100% deposit match. Terms and conditions may apply. Thanks again for making Locked Negators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. When we look at potential Florida Gators head coaching hires for the men's basketball team, obviously Mike White has left. He is with Georgia now. He is all bye-bye Mike White, which is fine with us. We've been asking for that. And Florida got paid for it, didn't have to pay his buyout. But looking at the potential replacements, I mentioned that I got someone with Florida ties in mind here. And I do. It's Anthony Grant. He's been a head coach I mean, most of the year since 2006 at VCU and then Alabama and then Dayton. He did have a few years off from 2015 to 2017, where he was with Billy Donovan with the Oklahoma City Thunder in the NBA for a little bit. So he took a little time off to go back to being an assistant, obviously different circumstances, but he's back as a head coach of Dayton. He has been for a few years. And Grant, obviously also already has ties to Florida because he was an assistant to Billy Donovan, both at Oklahoma City. But before that, he was a longtime assistant with Billy Donovan at Florida before he took over to be the head coach of VCU. And I know that some people may remember him from his time in Alabama, which was um, a, a little rough. They went just 117 in 85 in Tuscaloosa. But... I think it'll be different in Gainesville because I realize that we've spoken about a lot of guys at this point where it's, well, they haven't been a power five head coach. They haven't coached a big program. They haven't done this. They haven't done that. But uh, I I think that with Anthony Grant, it'll be different because he's someone that, yes, he does have the experience at a big program and he did not work out there. But it's been a few years since then. He found his stride at Dayton after working with Billy Donovan. So it's clear that he learned some things. He built his, he built his tactics. He developed his strategy. And he learned some things at Dayton to become a better head coach once again. And sure, when I say he found his stride at Dayton, you are absolutely justified to say, it. no, it doesn't matter that it, it, it's because it's Dayton. It's not that he found his stride. He's coaching at a smaller program. He found success at VCU flamed out at uh at Alabama and then now that he's with Dayton again he's finding success he's just a small program guy um first of all fooey I don't care about that at all but he's found success with Dayton consistently you know you can look at 
uh, the 2019, 2020 season and the 2020 NBA draft, he got Obi Toppin drafted in the NBA lottery to the New York Knicks. Woo. I'm sure he hasn't worked out a ton, but he's gotten guys to the NBA from Dayton. And that's not super easy to say. So I would not say that it's about the level of competition. I would say that it's about the development of Anthony Grant as a head coach. Again, after he took that trip to OKC for a couple of seasons to work under Billy Donovan again, also under that 2019, 2020 season, Anthony Grant had the Dayton Flyers rolling. I realize it's weird to say Flyers rolling, but he had the Dayton Flyers rolling with a 29-2 to record. He won six different Coach of the Year awards that year, obviously different places, conference, college Coach of the Year too, including the Naismith National Coach of the Year award. And if there would have been an NCAA tournament, again, COVID canceled it. If there would have been an NCAA tournament there, Dayton would have probably been... I, I like like a top 12 team there, which in the March Madness tournament is fantastic to be. And I think that Anthony Grant would find a lot of success in Gainesville. I think he would be able to bring back those veterans and former players from the national championship teams because, of course, he left around that time. But he was there and coached and recruited players like Joakim Noah, Al Horford, Corey Brewer. He, he coached so many of those guys. Udonis Haslam's been around. You know, you got Mike Miller could come back. There, there's so many guys where, obviously, I'm not saying to bring them on as assistant coaches or anything like that. And I'm also not saying to hire them as head coaches. I know I saw some people suggest Mike Miller or Mike Miller. No. um, Sorry, that ain't happening. But bringing them back for visits, bringing them back in just, just to show off like, hey, we've got, we've got veteran presence here with our alumni. Like we, We've got alumni support here. That goes a long way. You look at the big stink that they made with football with Sharif Floyd showing up. Twitter blew up just being like, oh my God, Sharif Floyd's helping the Florida Gators. Like, like that's huge. And that could happen with Joe Kim. No, with all these guys that already know Anthony Grant and genuinely would just be able to come back and it wouldn't seem like this fake facade that's getting put on in Gainesville. But then we're going to talk about the other guy that I've got for today, which is just speaking of VCU, this is honestly the reason I decided to include him in today's episode. I was like, we're talking about VCU already. We might as well do it now. Mike Rhodes from VCU is the next name to talk about. He's a name that I saw floated by Adam Silverstein of Only Gators, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to look into him. He could work a little bit. And Mike Rhodes is someone that after looking into him, I wouldn't have a problem with it if he came to Gainesville. He's not at the top of my list. He's not. He's probably not my top three to five, but he's on the list somewhere, um, which obviously I realize that's not a ringing endorsement, but I'm being genuine with you here. So he's someone that, yeah, I, w- I would not be opposed to. This is another one of those hires where Florida Gators fans, I realize a lot of the people that I've mentioned, a lot of pe- the names that have been floated by various sources, the response has been, oh, Another hire where we talk about the potential. We need a proven commodity, an established talent, a veteran coach, blah, 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 blah. Whatever phrase you want to use, we get it. You don't want to go based off potential. You want to go on a proven talent. Guess what? Everybody loves Billy Napier. He's a potential guy. He's not a proven talent in the SEC. He's a potential guy. Yeah, it doesn't always work. It didn't work with Mike White, but that's the thing where you look at high risk, high reward. It's hard to get these guys. It's hard to get Scott Drew from Baylor. It's hard to get Mark Few from Gonzaga. No, that's very hard. It's hard to get Tony Bennett. It, it's hard to get all these guys. But guess what? Everybody at some point was a smaller program coach. Billy Donovan came from Marshall. Like that. That's the, it, You got to get these guys from small programs and get them to your school and have them just blow up and be monstrous. You don't get that if you just go with the safe hire. No, so Mike Rhodes, I'm fine with going Mike Rhodes. I don't care. He brought VCU to two NCAA tournaments and a conference championship in his five seasons at Virginia Commonwealth. He brought three seasons with a 71% or higher winning percentage in his five seasons. Guess what? Mike White didn't do that in seven in Gainesville. And I don't want to hear about the, the level of competition because VCU is one of those very good small schools that we hear about so often. And sure, he wouldn't be a slam dunk hire. Of course, Mike Rhodes would not be a slam dunk hire, but we're shooting from three here. Three is more than two after all, but I can imagine what he'd be able to do in Gainesville because 
He's got two top 100 recruits coming into VCU this fall. Imagine what he could do with Florida's resources and Florida's just talent pool that's already there. And I realize that's a thing that I keep talking about with Florida's talent pool already there. It's a real thing that we're going to have to consider and we're going to have to talk about when we talk about these potential head coaching hires where the talent is here in Florida already. Get it to come to Gainesville. And Mike Rose can do that. He's already a proven recruiter. And also his full court press defense is pretty sick. So that full court press scheme to go with the talent and the athletes that he'd be able to bring with him to Gainesville. The potential is off the charts. This is one of those things where we talk about Anthony Richardson all the time of him not being a, a finished product at all. He's a, he's a ball of coal that you got to break down into a uh, diamond and like you could do that, but I don't care what you want to use. Sure. That's, that's the phrase I'm using here. Um, and like, I'm not saying to hire Mike Rhodes, but I am saying if you do hire Mike Rhodes, it's immense potential. Like it might fail, but there is immense potential. And honestly, I think you'd have to give Florida credit for just swinging it for the fences here. Of these two, obviously Anthony Grant is the better option, but Mike Rhodes is a totally viable person. I, and I'm not saying to hire him. I don't even know if I think he's ready for it right now. I don't know that for sure. I, I think he might be. I don't know that, but guess what? All I'm saying is don't let it be a hard pressed no right now. Like don't, don't let that be a definitive no right now. And we're going to get into our interview with David Reese in just a second. But first it's the new year. So that means it's new year's resolution time, spring break time for some of us. Summer's approaching quickly and you got to get fit. And if you're focused on getting fit, make sure to include Goat Bar in your plan. You know, you guys know at this point, I got a hardcore sweet tooth. It's my Achilles heel, really. Uh, but Built Bar is already coated in 100% chocolate. Most bars have 130 calories and just four net carbs, along with 17 grams of protein. Throw out your hidden stashes, the Reese's in the desk drawer, the Kit Kat in the cupboard, and just get Built Bar so you don't have to sneak around. You don't got to feel bad. You don't got to feel guilty. Built Bar is always coming out with new limited time flavors so that you'll never get bored. Use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off of your next order. That is LOCKED. L O C K E D 1 5 to get 15% off of your next order at built or builtbar.com. Anybody else make money this weekend? I know I did. I found the strategy of just live betting threes. That's what we do now. We live bet threes, and Kyrie, yeah, Lee helped me quite a bit against the magic. Whoo, sheesh. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action. Obviously, Florida. You screwed me, but the NBA is just cash money. I'm letting you know that right now. The NBA is the place to go. BetOnline.net even covers award shows, TV shows, and reality TV. With real-time updated odds and props on almost anything you can imagine, it's the best way to place your bets, and it's 100% free to sign up. Head to the website or use your mobile device. That's how I do it right here. Bang! Always. BetOnline.net, where the game starts and where you go after the game. Check how much money you won. College programs must be competitive in name, image, and likeness. It impacts current athletes and affects the decisions of recruits. And Gators fans can put Florida at the forefront of NIL. The Gator Collective is leading the charge, uniting fans and student athletes like never before. Commit for exclusive content, interactions, and events, which bring you closer than ever to your favorite players. Also, by joining the Gator Collective, you're empowering these student athletes to build relationships and develop skills that go far beyond just making money. You're providing an avenue for these Gators to excel in life. NIL will change the landscape of college sports, and we can't be left behind. We're Florida. Gator Nation, do your pipe by joining the Gator Collective today at www.thegatorcollective.com. Dot com. It's as cheap as six bucks a month, and it is so worth it. All right, and now I am joined by David Reese, linebacker for the Florida Gators. How you doing, David? I'm good. How you doing today? No complaints, man. No complaints. Uh, little little technical difficulties, which has been really fun. Yeah. But aside from that, <laughs> we finally worked. We finally got it working. Uh, I, I'm going to start with the very obvious question um how has the first day of spring ball been uh the first day of spring was great um it was good to be back running 
uh, back on the field, you know, I mean, we all love to play football and that's what we came here for. So it was good getting back to it, the grind, working out, letting it all be shown in the field and being able to put what we've learned in the meetings and the stuff we've been doing in the weight room. It felt good to put it on the field. Yeah, and you're someone who you, you've you had a few injuries over your time in Gainesville, but uh, assuming you're healthy now, what has your process been like to kind of rehab and get back into football shape? Uh, my process has been, uh, it's been a long one, but um, it's been very, very rigorous and uh, very time, uh, time consuming, very, it's just been a long journey, but we're bringing it along together good. And now with there, there's new leadership in Gainesville under Billy Napier. Uh, what has this process been like? Because we know that Coach Napier is kind of the guy where he's very focused on attention to detail and, and getting all these things done. So what has your process been like? Or what has the offseason been like for you guys? Uh, at first with a new coach coming in, it was kind of different. But I feel like the team has bought into Coach Napier's vision and uh, his goals for us as players, people, as a team, and I feel like he's came in with the right approach. Uh, being being the coach of a new team and having to get to learn uh, like new players, personalities, names, I feel like he's handled it very well and he's made the effort to show us that he wants to be here and he wants to help us succeed. And how, uh, I'm trying to say this without being bashful, how different has it been to be a player under Billy Napier's regime as opposed to the previous uh coaching staff um there's some differences just with uh like how the program is run coach napier has his ways of doing things coach mother had his way of doing things we all it's new faces around the staff i mean it's it's i mean it's still football you know you st- we still got our things we have to go to be on time the expectations are the same um but i mean it's been good one thing i will say is coach napier really uh harps on the aspect of uh getting to know your teammates more and not saying hey so and so like being able to call your teammate by his name and have a relationship with them on and off the field okay yeah it's uh, i'm assuming before it's just like hey like 88 or whatever number you're trying to yeah like before we didn't really we didn't really bond and stuff as much as we do now as a team and then now you guys also have this insane support staff. The Florida Gators now have one of the biggest just football staffs around now. Uh, how has that impacted the experience? I know that you guys kind of got parking issues cleaned up and, and mm-hmm. you got food or higher quality food coming in now. So what else has changed for you guys off field? Um, off the field, um uh, we have a few more uh, people put in place to help us as far as our bodies and stuff like that, taking care of it, nutrition, um, mainly the rehab and recovery aspect of uh, off the field with football, making sure we take care of our bodies when we're not on the field or not participating in workouts or team runs and stuff like that. And if you're able to, without uh, without giving away too much of the secrets. Uh, can you tell us kind of what we can expect your role to be in this defense? Because the listeners know by now that I'm a massive fan of Patrick Tony and Sean Spencer, and, and I love what they can do specifically with outside linebackers. So can you give us a little sneak peek about what your role will be in this defense? I mean, all I can really say is that um, we're going to get after it. You know, we're trying to uh, go out on the field, make plays, uh, be game changers and just come out with wins. And uh, we're going to go backwards a little bit now. We spoke about the new regime. We spoke a little bit about the old regime, but I'm, I'm going back to even before then. I'm going back to your high school days because I want to hear a little bit about your recruitment because you were someone who, you know, you were a four star at some spots. You were, hey, you had offers from Alabama. You had offers from Florida State, Georgia, Miami, and quite a few others. I believe you had 16 total offers. Uh, what was it that made you pick Gainesville and come to Florida? Um, when I chose my college decision, it was, uh, well, I really didn't even know too much about football when I did make a decision, honestly. But I chose my decision based on the uh, the relationships I had with uh, 
some of the previous coaches under Coach McElwain, uh, Coach Tim Skipper, and Coach Jawan Sider. Uh, they really, um, they really made a difference in uh, just the experience and the uh, the connection I had with them was different than a lot of places and a lot of people that I had met before. And Coach Skip was somebody I really wanted to play for just from how he treated me, my family, and it was just always sincerity. And I felt his genuineness. Thanks again for making Lock Nugget your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to the podcast. We'll be back tomorrow with more on your Florida Gators and the second half of that David Reese interview. Now make your second listen, Locked on NFL Draft. Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. For Locked On Gators, I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with Whole 9 Sports. That is W-H-O-L-E-N-I-N-E Sports. And I'll see you all tomorrow.